I'm really uh, finding now that so there's been this kind of this understanding of things is the mask off moment uh, the internet language that uh, you hear a lot you hear a lot of us on the in the right say it a lot you know, the mask has come off and uh, so one of the things I, I've been now starting to see more and more you know obviously masks are coming off uh, more and more and more but the key thing that really is starting to hit me is uh, people on the left need to be uh, understand they're being punished for their lack of candor this was something uh, a term that uh, I was made familiar with and it was just one of these things I you know candid camera but it was that when somebody was like oh no you see that what it was is that this officer was hiding something from their um, superior you know their their commander or something and uh, but it wasn't so obvious that it was that that you were obviously hiding this it was that you did not speak with candor <coughs> now the hardest area that this has been to deal with with uh, the left and then saying to the right no 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 these people are totally fucking lying to you they're putting you on like you just don't know they're putting you on bro whoa I think that's the heron. Let's see if I can get it. Wow. Wow, that thing's big. Holy crap. I only get to catch that every so often. It lives somewhere along this waterway or along this slough as it goes up, as you go up to it, its source. It's, it, it's somewhere up there, but I don't know. Every once in a while, you'll just see, like, one time I saw flying like literally a foot above uh it was like star wars it was flying like a foot above the water in this in this in this slough here in this slough here uh and just this perfect line you know and it just and and then the other one was behind it and i was like holy crap i only get to see stuff like at like six in the morning they really come out like super early like at dawn, you'll see them at dawn, and then you 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 will not see them unless they kind of pop out from wherever they're uh, hanging out in the bushes. So, something about um, the the right. There were certain people on the right. One of the more famous ones that I recall of this is Stephen Crowder versus uh, Oh Razor Fist on the subject of the AIDS epidemic of the 80s and that one of the things that Steven Crowder really, he ended up really informing Razor Fist about it, that Razor Fist had, as even being like, you know, a pretty serious Christian that, you know, is, you know, he, he he's, you know, he's, he's right wing. Um, the thing is, though, he, he had thought that straight people um, and gay people had spread AIDS like relatively equally or something like that. He had no idea that this is it, like he really had no idea of how uniquely different homosexual activity is than, than heterosexuals. That homosexual men have like uh, orders more partners. Um, they are often just just somebody you have sex with, just completely rando, you know, um, unprotected, they, like, there's some, there's some sexual transmitted diseases that it's almost now the, the purview of homosexuals, just was it, uh, just yesterday, um, the CDC has now started, uh, putting out this thing of how to include, was it an anti- like an, an STI treating antibiotic and that like on a daily basis as a prophylactic so that, that because gay men have so much unsafe sex that just take this all the time so you could have unsafe sex all the time. Um, that, that's our, our idea of that we've done this or done that about HIV. No, we haven't. We've literally come up with a way that gay men can just pass it around and not die of it 
So they're passing around an illness that unless they are constantly on drugs, they will die. So the gay community and the and and tranny bros are complete are are literally the pharmaceutical industry. The pharmaceutical industry is making a killing off of this. White liberal women think that they're doing something incredibly merciful and wonderful by keeping this charade going. And the whole thing about it is it's because nobody's speaking with candor. Once you start speaking with candor about it, everybody gets offended, but it becomes quite clear what you're dealing with. You know, that, that, that straight men are not nearly the dangerous perverts that not straight men are. Cis het men are the good guys when it comes to the sexual revolution. We're the good guys. Everybody else are bad. The rebellion is about being bad and spreading diseases and getting diseases and having irresponsible couplings that don't have any meaning. And end up actually hurting women's psyches. Just, just like how uh, we, we don't really like discussing how much more uh, powerful of an effect certain drugs and alcohol have on women. And have on, on kind of fucking up their brains. We don't want to discuss that. Because nobody wants to discuss that, that woman with scrambled egg brains that is screaming in the parking lot. No one wants to discuss their crazy ass mom, their crazy ass wine aunt, who's a nut. Wine aunt's a nut. The joke about wine aunt and oh, I'm gonna be the coolest wine aunt. Wine ants are nut jobs. That's the whole thing about it. We're not speaking with candor about this anymore. And because we, we, we refuse to speak with candor about so many subjects, you end up getting one side that is fundamentally kind of living to perpetually offend everyone. That's kind of the perception of the right now. And it's sort of fun. It's, um, but it's only going to be fun for so long because at some point a lot of these social problems are going to have to be dealt with. And they're going to, be, they're going to have to be dealt with with relatively like a, a method that's going to offer a relatively permanent um, method to deal with it. Um, like, oh, yeah, you know, whenever illegals come in, we throw them out. Uh, that's going to have to maintain forever. And people who, who have some kind of problem with that, we're actually going to have to come up with a method of kind of making them understand, fuck you. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's the unfortunate part of it and that, that's the, the thing about the whole candor um, you have so, so now you have these people like the, the endlessly offensive you know Nicholas J. Fuentes who's always saying things with not just candor but really vinegar and bile and trying to offend people who are left of center. And he likes offending a lot of people who are on the right, too. He likes picking fights. But um, the thing is, though, he's, he was correct in calling what he has called. When he said he was going to make the Zoomers rise up, he was correct. I, I have to start giving this to him. That what we saw as older people seeing the numbers on how Zoomers were behaving, and especially what the right is particularly good at, the language analysis on the internet. That's our field. Um, like most science, that's our field. <laughs> um, but it, that Fuentes was right. And the thing is, though, it's only going to be fun for a little while until the I'm going to regulate your attitude part of the Zoomers comes to age. You know, once these guys get big enough, they're going to make people stop. And and that that's that's not gonna be fun. You know, there's gonna be these moments where it's going to be like, you know, like what happened at LA um, University of LA. You know, that it's that more stuff like that's gonna be happening. That you're gonna see the, you know, concerned citizens. Yeah, the, 
the <laughs> let's just say, boys, the Council of Concerned Citizens might be showing up to tell the protesters to get on, you know, and that's what the Zoomers are starting to show because the left will not deal and speak with candor. They don't want to talk about what the sexual revolution, who came up with these ideas, what the books say. They don't want to deal with it. <laughs> now everybody's finding out and people are on some, you're going to stop this. And they're like, no, we're not. And it's like, really? Okay, well, first we're going to do this politely and buy the book. As time goes on, this is going to go off the books. And a lot of then also you're seeing, you know, a lot of these, these wackos who are like showing up and in, in, in dressing like clowns and reading to kids and, and, you know, being sex freaks. You know, what, you know, we do know about them is these are mostly like unattractive gay men. This is why they, they dress in drag. Um, it's a way for them to kind of become a character express themselves in a way that they, they usually can't because they're 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 un they're unattractive and they, they're usually fat, unattractive and gay. And so they have all these things against them that are anti status um, for a male. Um, and unless you're like really smart and very, very useful, it that's it. And, um, and, that, and that's very hard. That, that's a, like a lot of the men's movement. Th this would have been easier. All of this would have been easier if gay men started st understanding their place in the new men's movement. And they had started embracing this idea of stop moving your little slut friend around. She's going to need to get herself a boyfriend or a husband. You know, you're not her gay husband. Stop always, you know, like, stop palling around with depressed, you know, uh, depressed female fives. You know, it, you, you need to, um, you need to deal with, you, you're a man, you know, you're going to have to deal with your emotional states on your own anyway. Um, and, and she, she's not your pretend girlfriend, you know, she's not your not real sister, you know, it's, um, but they didn't want to do that and, and they can't once revolt was actually pretty good in, in describing like, where do people like this end up in the scheme of things? And, uh, and I was like, oh, okay, well, no. And in pre pre civilized societies, it, it appears that there's there's kind of roles that people like this fall into, but yet that they have to be in that role because they will not be accepted among most of the men <coughs> in most of their male roles. Um, yeah, so so the candor around the. Um, homosexual female child molester issue in uh, public schools, the female, uh, white liberal female child molester uh, teacher issues in public schools, that's something that now people are starting to figure out, whoa, this is a much worse problem than we thought. Like, this is way worse than, than we had ever considered. Like, this is now for some reason exploding, and it's like, no, you now have people who are are like becoming very very aware of this that this this has been going on for some time this way that we talk about the public schools when almost for two generations now we mock the public schools as these places where you know you're going to find debauchery and lewdness there used to even be an entire genre of movies that was you know <laughs> where very teenage looking teenagers would uh, have these wild and crazy fast times at a high school. You used to have TV shows about the, how, how awful and dramatic and crazy these high schools were. And you know, and the, what the kids are facing and all this stuff. And it's, 
and all of this is, yeah. And so, but we want to say, all you've got to do is throw money at this. All you've got to do is not punish criminal behavior, like behavior that is absolutely crimes. Violence against other people is criminal, like that you, they, you have to consult the police about that. Then it's like, no, no, you see, violent children, <laughs> you have to help the violent children by making the not violent children know that the violent children will never be punished for their violence. You know, that's, that's now where the, the super, we're being told that people who come up with ideas like that are morally superior and smarter. <laughs> you know, and that's, yeah. And that's why, that's why they insisted on, on masking kids with full knowledge that COVID could not infect most children who weren't, like, grotesquely medically fucked up obese. That you had to be medically super fucked up at obese level to, to have been affected by COVID if you were a child. But we're, and and we're, we're really, we're supposed to unquestioningly think that this is the realm of the smarty people, of the really, really smart people, and and uh, and but they will, and they never speak with candor. And when we catch them and stuff, what happens? Then suddenly, the candor, the candid part, slowly comes out through hearings, and and that's why that that's been the beautiful thing for people who hate Stephen Miller. The candor comes out when Stephen Miller's law, uh, law firm decides to sue you and it goes through discovery. Then everyone gets candid. Then suddenly everyone's admitting what everyone knew by being rational. <laughs> and uh, more and more, that's, we're winning that. So people like the Young Turks and, and, uh, are going to have more and more of a hard time trying to get this idea of like, no, 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 we're, it's not, we're not lying all the time. We're not deceitful. We just don't speak with candor. <laughs> Why not? Is it like you have some agenda you don't want people to be aware of? No, no, no. You see, you're, you're trying to read into things and think things that aren't the thing to think. <laughs> No, we, we don't speak with candor because, you know, sometimes, and then, you know, it's, then you just get talked into circles, talked into circles, like what, what Kevin Samuels talking to black women about what black men do, black men be doing these things, talking in circles. So I, uh, the, the other thing I was uh, thinking about was infill. This was something I think I erased Trump's thing about 10 new cities what really he's doing he is um, showing that he wants Starlink to do its thing one of the key things about the internal part of the country and why why the environmental theorists um, yeah the the, the, uh, the the Armageddon Enviro Enviro Armageddon theorists what is it that they're really, what's the issue that they're really dealing with? Okay, well, something I encountered in the Northwest was the um, people who are adjacent to Enviro Armageddon thinking. And so every once in a while, they'll, you know, you'll get into a conversation about like, what would be a good thing to do? So one of the things is the efficiency of trains. Now, you, you run into this a lot, and it always means this person got to visit Europe. Um, or if not, somehow they're so fucking dense that they really, they, they haven't been on many trains. So they really don't get, like, okay, if you don't li live between A and B, or if you don't live at A or point B, then that's that. It's not efficient. It's definitively not efficient because you, you, would, you would have to get off at one of those two points. Well, one point you got on, you'd have to get off at this other point and then get to your location that's not at B. You would still have to travel. So what I started to find that 
people, I think uh, one of these people, I think it came from stories. He had heard a lot of stories about trains. Um, I, and I think in Europe. And one person, they, they had taken trains in Europe. And they were like, oh, and I traveled to Europe and I was on the train. And it was so great. And we were talking to people and people were so nice. And, and that weird goofball liberal tourist mentality that the world is nice because I was once a tourist you know I was once a rich American young tourist and the world is a fascinating place when you're a rich college educated tourist so let me tell you how other people do things so much better than our country but yet constantly come here you know so the train thing hit me because well the Roman armies set up one day's march systems of, and, and then it developed very likely from the local people, um, that if you walk a day, you will get to the next small town. That's not the same in the United States. That's not even necessarily the case in New England. And, and that would make sense in New England. <laughs> um, it, it, the infill project that must happen in the United States is to take the density out of the cities. That's our biggest problem, is that we've reached a point where there's a certain level of density in cities that we're having real serious problems having using the technological efficiencies available to have inexpensive houses that don't... Uh, end up causing <clears throat> that much of a disturbance to the natural environment um, and, and energy to run these things that doesn't cause that much of a disturbance to the natural environment um, such that people it, it's uninhabitable um, and remember animals will inhabit places humans can't <laughs> so it's can, can humans inhabit it you know and uh, if, if a bunch of people live there long enough, can like New York is becoming a place that's becoming harder and harder for humans to inhabit and be happy. So you would think, well, what do you do? You don't mess, you don't try to repair the boat while somebody's on it and it's packed full of people. You have to empty the boat. So there's going to be the Trump's idea of 10 new cities. There's a bunch of stuff that it's like, yeah, infill is the next project by most major powers. China's fucking up their their whole infill thing. They 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 they've got they've got all immense amounts of their own problems. Russia has to do infill. They they have way too much space that, that's not being used. They have to start getting people leaving the denser areas and, and becoming homesteaders. The thing is, that might not necessarily be like a popular or normal thing anymore to that culture, so it has to be made to be, has to be incentivized. The United States needs to do this too. It's that the, the uh, Enviro Armageddon people are wackos and, and they don't speak with candor. And so what really it is is that they just like the idea of people being corralled in in what will be like some kind of future Star Trek city, and then and then they could be starved of resources, so that they have to everybody has to live like like it's a housing project. Like they they th they don't like humanity, so that's why they want everyone living in a housing project. Um, but they're not speaking with candor, you know. It's and in some way they kind of I think they think that they will live better than other people. I don't really know if that's that's really so, but you would kind of think that that would have to be in, you know, part of it. They're like, oh, no, but me, it'll be like the uh, the show or the song by Dead Kennedy's Shrink. That, that's Dead Kennedy's nails so much of this. That, uh, that's what the Enviro Armageddon people are on about. The, the, the song Shrink is a fantastic song that describes where their heads are really at. And at the end of it, and they're like, yeah, but those of uh, uh, us well-bred beautiful people that's not going to happen to us that's and that's where that that's the idea behind kind of the 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 
right? That's, that's kind of the idea behind, not just in the song by the Dead Kennedy Shrink, but we're starting to see that evolve in our society among the college educated. You know, that they, they've been well-bred and they've got money and, you know, they're not going to have to go through that process. So, uh, just some thoughts I was having. The infill thing, oh, the potential there is immense. The potential there is immense. Um, yeah, all right, later.